Good day, everyone. I'm very happy to be here with you uh, with this uh, workshop uh, related to the year end syndrome. And what we're going to do today um, in this session is that we are going to analyze a little bit why I feel or why we feel so tired and out of focus when the year is coming to an end. Um, so what's my, what's the intention of the session? Um, we're going to reflect a little bit the reasons why I feel like postponing everything and to analyze where I'm standing or where we are standing in order to establish new goals for 22. Um, not only the kind of goals that sometimes we like to think our resolutions when we are eating the 12 grapes uh, at the end of the year, but to establish real concrete goals for the next year and also to work on the steps in order to achieve them, which is um, quite very important if I really want to achieve them. So what are we going to do? Uh, well, I would like to start today with a little um, story that, um, well, happened to me some days ago. Um, I teach English online um, using neural language coaching. And sometimes I use art images also. It is referred to um, my program of common art. And so one of these images that I was showing a group of girls, um, apart many other questions, I asked them which character they identified with. And to my surprise, uh, many of them identified themselves with the procrastinator. Um, I am pretty sure that you have heard this thing to procrastinate. So what is exactly to procrastinate? When we check a definition um, on a dictionary, we see that to procrastinate is to be slow, to be late about doing something that should be done to delay doing something until a later time because you do not want to do it, because you are lazy, because you are tired. And there are many other reasons why we procrastinate, which we will discuss a little bit um, further on in this conversation. Um, but first of all, I would like us to talk a little bit about brain fog. Um, this is like a syndrome that, well, it's been present in many, um, I would think that all our lives, but now with COVID and with all of this lockdown, um, it has brought uh, the attention of some researchers, neurologists, neuroscientists a little bit more. We're feeling this brain fog. Uh, what are like the symptoms of it? We lack concentration. We feel that we cannot stay focused for a long time. We are unable to follow intricate plots on a reading on a book or on a TV program even. We prefer to watch simple things because if the plot, if the story is too complicated, I cannot concentrate, I cannot understand anything. We find it a little bit more difficult to solve problems our brain is not focused. We lack creativity. Um, maybe it's difficult for us to take decisions and we tend to be a little bit more uh, forgetful. I don't find my keys. I go to the kitchen for a glass of water. I do several things over there and then I come back and oh my God, I have forgotten my glass of water. Uh, this is um, like the symptoms, the symptoms of uh, brain fog. Now, what are the reasons? This is very important. Um, some uh, neuroscientists uh, think that one of the reasons is that our brains now are overstimulated by the screen, but understimulated by the external world. We are at home, um, working from home probably, spending more time. Uh, we tend to go out less because we're afraid of um, COVID, getting uh, the disease, et cetera. 
And so our brain receives less stimuli, stimuli from the outside world. And um, instead of that, we are watching the screen more, social media, the phone, the um, laptop, the television. So it is like the same kind of stimuli. And sometimes it's very hard, the light, the sounds, everything, but less real world stimuli. Other reasons might be um, something like um, lack of water. Um, dehydration causes also this brain fog. Um, now, um, what is happening inside our brain? And I would like to talk a little bit about part of the brain, the hippocampus. Um, it's like in the, in the center of our brain. The hippocampus, the name um, is from Greek. And uh, well, um, it is, you see the image of this little sea animal because it has the same form. Um, the hippocampus is in charge of pattern separation. It allows individual memories to be successfully encoded so that we distinguish one memory from another. Now, if we spend most of our days sitting in the same place, watching the same things, doing the same activities, and even sometimes eating the same thing or talking to the same kind of people, my, my, my network, my people at work, my um, the same family members, etc. And so the brain is no longer able to separate what I did yesterday or the day before or the week before. And so um, that's when we become uh, what, when we get this brain fog. Um, what is important is to try and stimulate the brain with different um, <clears throat> with different impulses, with different activities, with different stimuli in, um, in, many, in many ways. So I invite you to do a little exercise and see how much you can remember and how much or how different your activities are being. This is just to be aware of what is happening, what we are doing or what we aren't doing. Um, so what new things, try to remember, what new things have I done this week? If you have a piece of paper, that would be fantastic. If you can write down, try to remember, five things that you have eaten this week. The more different, the better. If you can remember, maybe you tried a new fruit, maybe you um, ate in a different place or uh, had a food with a, a friend or somebody that you can remember, that would be fantastic. Try to remember four people you have talked to and not the usual people you talk to every day. Remember, try to remember four different people you've talked to, different conversations, a new friend, or a friend that you hadn't uh, spoken with for a long time. Try to remember three activities out of the ordinary. Something different you did this week, perhaps. Perhaps you went out for a walk. Perhaps you um, went to a different supermarket, a different market. Try to bring out to your memory, to your hippocampus, these three different activities. Now, also, if you can bring to your memory two new places you've been to, that would be fantastic if you have been. It doesn't matter how simple they are. Maybe you just went for your, um, well, for your food or for whatever to a different um, um, convenience store. And also, uh, the last one, have you seen any new person this week? A new friend, a friend you hadn't seen a long time, a family member you hadn't seen, the person in the street, somebody that you hadn't noticed, somebody that came to your house and visit, 
can you distinguish maybe the person who picks up your garbage was different? Do you ever notice who picks up your garbage? So these kind of exercises, they are um, mindfulness. Uh, this kind of exercises help us remember, help us distinguish these um, new events and will be um, new stimuli for our hippocampus and it will help our brain enormously. Um, so as I was telling you, the brain needs new stimuli. The brain, um, because it all seems to be the same. Um, so what kind of activities can you do in order to stimulate your brain? Maybe instead of just sitting when you're on the phone talking to a person, try and walk around your house if you cannot go out or in a park or in the parking lot, but have these conversations while walking. You're stimulating your brain. Try and change the location of some things in your house, even if they are simple. For example, in my case, sometimes I change the location of my um, trash can in my bedroom. Why? Because I like to play basketball with my um, with my garbage, all right? So I know where it is and I throw my piece of paper, my my tissue to the to the garbage bin. And then when I know the exact location of it, I move it somewhere else. So my brain has to think now, okay, now I have to aim at a different location. These kind of things help the brain. Um, try and set up a new routine. Maybe you would like to um, start a new kind of exercise or um, uh, learn something new or start reading a book and set a new routine. Maybe you would like to start your day with a little uh, meditation, uh, visualization practice. Setting new routines also helps the brain because the brain has to de-learn something that is very familiar for it uh, to it and has to learn or relearn something new. Uh, you can always do this uh, brain gym exercises, whether it's um, as simple as brushing your teeth with a different hand or doing um, fingering, uh, finger exercises or um, any other kind of brain gym exercises. They are also very good for the mind, for the brain. The brain, remember, it's a muscle. So as a muscle, it needs exercise. Um, recap your day activities like the one we did the ones we the one we just did before going to sleep try to remember what did i do today what was new what was exciting what can i consider novelty for my brain so this is this is a fantastic exercise um try and talk to a different friend every week oh there is somebody maybe that you haven't spoken with for the past uh, I don't know, four, three, four, five months or so, talk to them. Or better yet, if you feel safe, if you feel like you want to go out now, you can visit them. It would be fantastic. Spend some time outdoors, um, walking, enjoying the park, um, anything that can bring new stimuli. Watch the plants, but closely watch the plants, the flowers around your house. And well, um, the next point that I would like to speak about is this amygdala hijack. I don't know if you have heard it, but this is the um, emotional, normal um, response, emotional response to stress. And I will share with you my personal story, what happened to me now that I was in, uh, uh, I was in Puebla for the uh, Mextisol event. It's a, um, a convention for English teachers that happens every year here in Mexico. And so 
I thought that everything was under control. Um, I had my, my, my um, presentation prepared. I had um, rehearsed it. All my information was clear. I even went shopping for new clothes to look nice, smart for this event, bought my tickets, reserved my hotel. Everything was under preparation. But the truth is that um, I felt stressed. For two weeks or so, I felt stressed. Why? Because I was going out of this um, confinement in my house. I've been teaching um, English online for the past one year and a half. So basically I haven't left my home. And this Maxtizol event meant that I would have to go um, to Puebla, take a bus, be in a hotel and be surrounded by approximately 1000 other people. My brain got stressed. The previous two weeks, I tried to take to take more walks, tried to relax, tried to do more um, mindfulness, more um, visualizations, meditations, so that my amygdala was calm. Uh, but the truth is that I wasn't unaware that some things were happening inside my body. I'm not going to make this story very long, but what happened is that I. Um, well, my conference was, was fine. It was excellent, I think. I have even been invited to um, give a presentation for um, 2022. But my body got into certain physiological processes that made me come back to my house the following day instead of staying in Puebla for um, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, as I had planned. I had to come back on Wednesday because I got sick. And this was due to this amygdala hijack. So what is it? What is this amygdala hijack? Um, let's go back to the brain. So in the middle of the brain, part of the limbic system, there are, because actually there are, there are two, there are two small glands called amygdala, uh -huh. um, the amygdala, one on each side of the brain. They are very small. Mm -hmm. And what happens is that uh, when our brain perceives a situation as a threat, the thalamus receives this stimuli. And so it signals to the amygdala and to the cortex there is an alert. This is threatening. Is there danger? Just recap yourself when there is an event like, um, I don't know, an, uh, an, an awful thing like an, like an earthquake. Well, this is common in Mexico, so that's why I bring it back. Um, I bring it to this, to this session. But uh, when there is something like an earthquake, what is happening? This is a threat. And so my brain is signaled and my brain has to react very quickly. Am I in danger? Should I fight? Should I flight, run away? Or should I freeze? Think of the people, think of, um, well, prehistoric times when uh, humans were chased by big tigers um, running in the savanna, and yeah, this is this is this is natural. This is a natural response. I don't want to be eaten. So what do I have to do? Do I have the tools to fight the tiger back and kill it, or do I have to run? Do I have to flight? Mm -hmm. Do I have to run? Do I have to climb a, a tree? There's a, is there a tree that I can climb? Is there a place where I can hide? or I just panic and freeze. This is a split second decision. What happens in our body? There is a great release of adrenaline. 
our body has to get into alert. So there is a heart, an increased rate, uh, heart rate. Our, we feel that the heart is um, out of our chests. We feel this high blood pressure, of course, because the body needs oxygen, the body needs blood to the legs, to the arms, to all our bodies in case we have to run. There is fast breathing, of course. I, my body needs, needs oxygen, needs to bring in oxygen through breathing. breathing. Um, I get nervous, I feel my hands sweaty. Uh, well, all my body is sweating actually. Um, maybe I start shaking, maybe I even feel nauseated and there is a generalized inflammation of the body. Why? Because if there is inflammation, my body, my skin is protecting myself in order I am um, beaten by this animal. And so uh, there will be less bacteria entering my body. Uh, so the amygdala hijacks my cortex. And so my cortex cannot think, cannot decide what to do. Of course, there's a release of stress hormones, the both, both, it's the adrenaline and the cortisol. I cannot concentrate. I don't have clear thinking and I don't know what to do. And this is in a certain way what happened to me going back to mestizo, my body got uh, certain situations. One of them was my, um, my digestive system, because if I am in alert, my body brings oxygen, brings blood to the parts that are more important. In this case, the legs, the arms, in case I have to run away, uh, but there is less oxygen, oxygen and less blood to my stomach. So digestion feels strange. That's why sometimes if I am stressed, I, um, it doesn't matter if I eat very healthy, sometimes I feel like I couldn't digest the food. And well, um, another situation that I had, and actually it was the one that brought me back to my home, sweet home, was that um, uh, talking about this inflammation process, pro, uh, process my gums got swollen. Um, I thought it was a toothache. It wasn't a toothache, but it was terrible, terribly painful. Um, when I went to the dentist, she, tell, she said that it was only my gums that were swollen. When the stress, well, I was able to give my conference, but when the, stressed, when the stress diminished, because I had given my conference, the pain increased. And that brought me back. Now, all of these, all of this is fantastic when you are being chased by an animal, when you have a really threatening situation, but it's not, um, it's not right for our everyday living. And um, actually we're living in situations, well, every day we are perceiving um, threatening situations. And um, The thing also is that our brain cannot um, distinguish um, reality from fantasy. So sometimes we feel that, or we think, or the brain thinks or imagines that there is a very um, threatening situation where actually the threat is not real. And this brings me to the next point um, which uh, will be working on a tool that I have found um, to be very great um, when, um, well, in order to plan our activities first, we have to know who we are, where we are standing. 
Um, some days ago, I was watching uh, one of these TED talks and the person over there, I'm sorry, I don't remember his name. He was talking about, um, well, making reference to this uh, procrastinating thing um, that usually our performance, um, we want to perform great because our fantastic performance will be proof that we have a great ability on whatever we're doing, and then we will be worth. And I think that this is also a little bit what happened to me. Um, yes, I procrastinated a little bit because I got invited maybe like in April or May for Mextizo, but then I um, took a lot of time to start preparing for it. I was on time, I did everything great, but still there was this, this thing on my brain that um, there's, there had been a lot of time since I hadn't given any talk, any, any, uh, I hadn't been a speaker for any conference and I was going back to the real world. And so, yes, I wanted to perform greatly on this Max Tiesel event. I wanted to show that my all my abilities because um, well I have forty I have been teaching English for forty years, and um, so I wanted to show this to and to demonstrate all the Mexico people, all the teachers, the English teachers in Mexico, that I was worth a teacher. And so, one of the tools that I want to bring to you today. <clears throat> is the SWOT analysis. Maybe you have heard it, but basically it uh, is used for um, companies when they want to set their business plan. And I think that this is a fantastic tool to use for ourselves to set our personal plan. Um, so we have uh, three basic questions um, these questions I apply to myself whenever I want to do this and I do it uh, like frequently. How am I in this moment? Where am I standing in this moment? And where do I want to go? Um, so talking about who am I, well, talking about these three questions, uh, I need to make an uh, to 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 perform an, an analysis of my strengths, which are my skills. What am I good at? What is my knowledge? What's my expertise? Which are my positive habits that I can take advantage of? And which are my assets? What do I have? It can be um, material, right? Do I have a computer? Do I have a, um, a car? Do I have all of these things that I can consider can be beneficial for, uh, for me to perform? And also, uh, on the other hand, which are my weaknesses? Those things that I'm not good at, those things that I don't know, and that I need to learn or that I want to learn to become a better person, to become better in whatever I want to do. I should also consider my negative habits. What things do I want to change that I know that are not um, doing good for myself? And which are my liabilities or the things that I owe could be money I owe, could be many other things that I don't have and I need to have in order to achieve my goals. And the most important question, where do I want to go? And it has to do with how can I transform my weaknesses into strengths? So this is this is like the first the first um, um, assessment that you have to do on yourself. Um, 
what routines do you have to change? How can you change your brain? Um, and how can we make strong connections so that we can achieve our goals? Um, the strengths and the weaknesses, they both refer to my personal things. They're not part of the external world. They are my assets, my positive habits, my knowledge and expertise, my skills. Now, the second part of a SWOT analysis has to do with the opportunities and the threats. And these are external. There are opportunities in the outside world. What is the world offering me right now? Uh, who are the people um, around me who can help me achieve these goals? Friends, family, other people that can help me. Um, what opportunities of development and growth do I have outside? What courses, what training programs can I take in order to achieve my goals? And we, of course, have these threats. Definitely COVID is one of them. Um, we have it and it's fear of COVID, fear of getting um, um, the disease, fear of people, fear of any other circumstances, what competition is there in the outside world. Maybe I, well, the activity that I want to perform, there are many people already doing it. So what's my competition? Which are my hindrances? Which things are um, standing on my way that may um, represent that I cannot move forward achieving my goals? Um, friends, family, other people, sometimes they can be threats because sometimes they don't let us do something or they require time, they will consume time that I need to achieve my goals. And also, of course, the economic situation in, um, in, in, in your country, um, the political situation, sometimes they can be threats. So the question is, how can I overcome threats so that they can, so that I can see them as opportunities? But this is a very um, thorough analysis that you have to do for yourself, that we all have to do for ourselves, because we don't want to leave things to chance. What we want to do is to achieve change. This is the first part that I brought here today. And there will be a second part where we will talk of other um, tools that we can use in order to establish the goals for 2022. But if I might, if I might suggest to all of you, um, I think it would be nice before going to the second part that will be in a week or so, um, reflect upon these things. I invite you to make your SWOT analysis and to really reflect where you are and where you want to go to. In my case, for example, well, I'm going to share part of myself. This is um, nowadays, or this is the SWOT analysis that I made um, for, this, for this talk with you. I know, because I, I also am starting to plan for my 22 goals. So this is the analysis that I'm doing right now. I know that um, I have an excellent teaching method. I know that my common art uh, sessions are big success. They are bringing many people around to talk around art and to have these wonderful conversations. And my, uh, well, the, the participants are really learning English. I love speaking um, in public. I know that I am a good communicator and I know that I am uh, quite well organized. But yes, of course, I have my weaknesses. I know that 
um, physically speaking, I'm not in an excellent shape because, um, sorry, I don't like exercise and I lack this willpower to change my habits. So I really have to work on that. I know that I am not a quite a sociable person. Yes, um, this might sound a little bit strange because I am a good communicator, but I don't like being around many people. Mm -hmm. And another uh, weakness of, of, uh, on me is that I, uh, well, since I haven't been out for a long time, I feel a little bit afraid of going back into humanity and teaching face-to-face. -face. Which are my opportunities? I have great opportunities because, well, I'm living near Cuernavaca, and so I'm near an industrial uh, center called CIVAC. So I know that I have the opportunity to give insight or online company teaching, whether it's one-to-one -one or whether it's in group, but I'm near here. And I have this great opportunity to become a, um, a company teacher. Um, well, I've done it before, but I haven't done it in a long time. So I can go back into company teaching. For that, of course, I need to train teachers. And I know that I have a good program to train teachers and to create my own team of teaching because, mm, I mean, there's a limit. Um, during the day of things that I can do. Uh, one great opportunity, of course, is this all of this social media and the marketing that can be done online, Instagram, Facebook, um, YouTube, etc., so that people can get to know me and can get to know what I am able and um, capable of doing. And I like to give um, conferences, and this is also a great opportunity, whether it's Max Tiesel or I have been invited to other places. Yes, my threats right now, COVID, maybe we get back to confinement. We don't know what's going to happen with Omicron and uh, all of these things. Europe is going back into confinement. Let's see what happens in Mexico. Um, as I told you, one threat of mine is time because, well, the day has 24 hours, but I cannot work 24 hours a day. There's a limit for that. Um, yes, there's great competition. Of course, we are many, many English teachers in the world, and there are many, many, many apps and YouTube videos free for you to enjoy and well, you don't have to pay for that. And maybe if you are a good self learner, you can learn a lot from that. Mm -hmm. And yes, another very sad situation is the low salaries in Mexico. Not everybody can pay private uh, sessions, the kinds, uh, the kind of sessions that I give. So what do I have to do? I have to find the ways to um, transform these threats into opportunities. I have done some of them, but how can I move forward? Um, this is what I want to share with you. This is what I would like you to think about from now until next, um, well, the part two of, uh, of this year-end syndrome, how to overcome it and how to plan smart goals for 2022. So, in part two, what are we going to do? How can I make my dreams come true? Next Saturday, um, I will upload the video. So be, be pending of the video that I will upload next week. What are we going to do? We're going to reflect about the differences between dreams and goals. Uh, and try to establish priorities, activities. Yes, priorities on my actions. What do I have to do? What is more important? What steps am I going to take so that I walk little by little towards reaching my goals and making my dreams come true? I'll be waiting for you. Hope you enjoy this video and be tuned 
for next one. Thank you very much and have an excellent day.